Hey everybody, my name is Rabbi Denise. I serve secular synagogue and online community that is online on purpose. We're always online. And our mission is to foster what we call two directional goodness in Judaism. That is making Judaism an impactful force for goodness in our own lives so that we can become forces for goodness out in the world. Um, this is my Rosh Hashanah commentary. So every year at our secular synagogue services, I do you know, you might think of it as a sermon, but I don't like to preach at people, so I think of it as a commentary. Um, and this year's draws on the traditional story of the Akedah, the binding of Isaac. Um, and it also includes a poem by me, which I sort of, with humility and vulnerability, offer to you. Uh, it's called The Power of Presence. Rosh Hashanah is always an opportunity to look forward. As we embark on a new year, drawing on the Jewish wisdom that has us mark time and its passing, we think about what is before us. By that I mean, what is in front of us? You'd think the words before us would relate to the past, to what came before, to yesterday, but we use it to mean the future. As we look forward, as in looking forward to the year to come, we are future focused. But the word before reminds us of the tricky nature of time. What's past is always also present. And our past can even inform our future, especially if we let it, it can determine our entire future. That's why we also need to remain mindful of the present moment, the moment we're in. The tricky nature of time is why the previous year hangs like a specter as we imagine the year to come. This year, we have faced horrific wildfires, intensifying climate crises, a grand swell of Black Lives Matter activism, and a global pandemic. Of course, these issues will impact our year to come. We are not leaving the past behind. We bring it with us into the future that dawns. But we also get to chart the course of that future within what is in our control. Who do we want to be this year? How will we take the circumstances we find ourselves in and make our lives and the world as beautiful as possible? We draw on sacred stories and texts as we mark this day as Jews have done for centuries. We let the wisdom of our forebears guide us as we carve out a future that those forebears could not have imagined. The past is present as we are future focused. The story that informs this commentary is the Akedah, the binding of Isaac. Abraham, the father or founder of our people according to the Hebrew Bible, is told by God to sacrifice his son Isaac as a sign of devotion. In that first instance, when God calls Abraham, Abraham answers, Hineni, here I am. Abraham takes Isaac up the mountain where the sacrifice is to take place. He binds him to the altar and he picks up the knife. The angel of the Lord calls Abraham, Abraham, to which Abraham once again answers, Hineni, here I am. The angel tells Abraham to stay his hand. Abraham sees a ram in the thicket and sacrifices that creature in place of his son. And Abraham is told that as a reward for his devotion, his descendants, us, will be as numerous as the stars in heaven and the sands on the seashore. There's much to say and has been said about this story, but here is something I can offer, especially for this year. I believe presence is what the story tells us we can offer when moments are difficult. When Abraham is called, he answers Hineni, and then he says it again, and the repetition in the text is important. When tasked with the unimaginable, Abraham answers, I am ready, I am here, I will show up. And presence is what he can offer his son as well. The text tells us that they journey alone up the mountain and three days pass. Abraham can't offer his son reassurances, but he can offer his presence. I ask you to what and to whom will we offer that kind of devoted presence this year? We are being called not from heaven, but by the circumstances of our world on fire to think about how we face an uncertain future. We can't offer each other reassurance. We can offer each other presence. Hineni. Another central theme of the Akedah story is sacrifice. It is shocking that Abraham is willing to kill his son and Jews have wrestled with it for centuries. Could I have made the same choice? Would it be worth it if I did? When we usually think about parental sacrifice, we imagine parents sacrificing for their children. But in this story, it is the child to be sacrificed. And on the surface, it seems unfathomable. Having said that, 
We are living in a time where collectively, we appear willing to sacrifice our children, the world's children, through our political gridlock and our collective denial and unwillingness to tackle the very real threat of climate change. When I read the story of the Binding of Isaac this year, for the first time I identified with Abraham. I feel as though I'm sitting with my own children on the edge of something, on the precipice of a very uncertain future, and I am truly unable to offer meaningful reassurance. What I can offer is my presence. Abraham offers no resistance when he is called to kill his son, and it seems societally we offer no resistance against the threat of climate change. But sacrificing our kids' futures is not inevitable. We can make choices, can make changes that will increase the likelihood of a strong and bright future for all of the world's children, but it will require sacrifice. Now, normally, most of us are not used to making significant sacrifices, at least not in the past several decades, until COVID. Obviously, COVID has been devastating, but if it has done one thing for us, it has pushed us from selfishness to sacrifice. Not everyone, but many of us have made significant sacrifices in order to protect the lives of people we don't know. And I believe that is the training we need for the sacrifices that are before us. As we think about the wisdom of our forebears, the stories in our tradition, we know one way to interpret is to rewrite. And so I offer a poem I wrote for my children on the occasion of this Rosh Hashanah, 5781 or 2020. Hineni, I am here, will always be here, even when no longer needed. Hoping you've heeded the words I offer, guesses at my half-answered questions, my imperfect truths, my imaginings of what you'll require and desire as you go out into the world, the life before you unfurled, your formidable choices, your small but resolute voices, attentive, ready, awake. Hineni, I am here. I was here for night feedings, knowing that being here is a constant call to action, a wake-up call, a shofar blast that's never in the past. As I sleep, I am still perched on the edge, can be lurched awake at the slightest sound, trying to ground my thoughts in the present while dreaming and hoping that you will be okay, my babies. Hineni. I am here with unsure parental advice, willing to make any sacrifice, worrying about the world, the life before you unfurled, with wild wildfires, floods, blood in the streets, everywhere illness, no time for simplicity and stillness, our future at risk, so much you'll have to fix when we were the ones who broke it. My mind is future forward, your happiness my focus. Hineni, I am here. No vision to stay my hand against the destruction of all we've planned, doing all we can, dialogue across difference, protest and pickets, because you will not be the ram in the thicket. You are my whole hope, deserving of a good life and breath, and one day a good death. I can't offer you reassurances as we weather occurrence after occurrence of crisis, stasis, so much waste, but I see you and I offer you attention and presence and the resonance of these ancient and sacred words, Hineni. I started by speaking of the trickiness of time, how the present informs the past and the past informs the present. We interpret, we move on, we move forward. I love the idea that what comes before and what is before us are always intention. The point of this time of year, the high holidays, especially this year, 2020, and as we move into 5781, is to reflect on where we've been, where we are, and where we want to go. It is to remain future focused while remaining present to what is. Every single day is a gift, and the biggest gift we can offer to one another is meaningful presence. To say again in words and actions, I am here with you now. Hineni. Shana Tova.